Hey, y'all, it's your girl, Claudia Jordan. We're back with TGIF. We're here to spill the tea and break down the biggest headlines in the news and on social media. So sit back, relax, and ready, and get ready for this hot tea. Please welcome Al Reynolds. What's up, Al? Hey, what's going on, Claudia? <laughs> all good, all good. Ready for the show. And please welcome Armand Wiggins. What's up, Armand? What's going on, everybody? You know, I'm just feeling young, vibrant, and free. <laughs> okay, good for you. Good for Come you. On, free. Um, Young, vibrant, and free. You know, when you're young, vibrant, and free, it keeps a lot of bitterness away when in old age. So you want to stay young, vibrant, and free. Um, I feel you. I feel you. You're as young as your spirit, your insides. Absolutely. All right. Well, let's go ahead and get into these topics, and hopefully there's some vibrancy in these topics. Robin Dixon announced that she will not be returning to the Real Housewives of Potomac next season. Robin said, the network did not invite me back. I was fired for lack of better words. Do you think Robin was an integral, integral part of the show? Armand, what do you think? Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. I really don't watch this show, but I like the fact that she said that, hey, I'm not going to fake the funk. I was fired. They let me go. And at the end of the day, I've been hearing across the board, this franchise has been needing to sp uh, spice it up. So, you know, perhaps, you know, the time is up for her. They need to bring in some new talent. And, you know, they, she, they didn't see her necessary anymore. So good for her. And hopefully she moves on and finds something better. All right, Al, what are your thoughts? Well, this is my thought on this. One thing that we can't lie about is her presence and her being a good cast member. I think, and then remember the season where her husband got fired from his job, caught in that cheating scandal, then the, the student situation, it was all great fodder for the cast, but she wasn't willing to share it. She wasn't willing to talk about it. And Claudia, you know this better than anybody. When you sign up for reality television, you have to talk about your life. You cannot just sit there and talk about everybody else's. You have to talk about yours. She elected not to be transparent about it. And I was surprised that she made it to this past season because especially after Andy confronted her about it and she kind of just brushed it off. So I kind of saw the writing on the wall but was she an integral part of the cast before all of this happened? Absolutely. Oh, we have some comments. Nicole Perry said, I liked her, but she was getting boring. Veronica Smith said, end the whole franchise already. I don't know if the whole franchise should be ended because I think Mia, well, she got a really pretty popping storyline. And so D'Angelo said, I respect Robin for keeping it real, but had Juan given her the support she needed, her job would have been intact. All right, we keep getting more comments. Chelsea Love said Robin was meeting below the bar. She had to go. All right, Robin, I hope you bounce back and find something else. And hopefully your marriage will do better without the stress of reality TV. She All right, had that podcast, Claudia, with uh, Giselle. Yeah, but a podcast versus a housewives check. <laughs> mm -hmm, fine, unless you drove buttons. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what them kind of checks is hitting on. Uh, a woman called out Twitch streamer Kai Sanat for allegedly paying her for sex. The woman leaked multiple photos of herself in bed with Kai and wrote, when Kai Sanat don't pay you all your hush money. Now, her antics did not land her in favor with social media. Someone on Instagram wrote, admitting on video that you're selling cat while trying to extort the person you sold the cat to is just preposterous. Another person wrote, extortion, prostitution, and leaking nudes is now a crime. What are your thoughts on the situation, Al? What do you think about this? Was this a bad move? Uh, listen, she had to do what she had to do because he tried to play her to the left, right? I think, though, the only way that I feel like she's going to get off, we talk about this on my YouTube, I think what happened here is he's trying to say that he only sent her $50, where she's saying he sent her $5,000, right? Now, one thing, if he takes her to court, Kai Sanat, you need to be very careful about taking her to court because what her lawyer can do is be very smart and have all of your records summons, not summons, uh, deposed. I'm, I'm using the wrong word, everybody. I, my brain's not working. And one thing that we all know is that you don't want the legal system in your transactions because mm. other things could come unfold as they're talking about this particular case. So what I would say... Kai, I know that you got a little bit of uh, ego in this, but you might want, if you owe her money, give her her money so she'll be quiet because she claims she has other damage and information on you. But the last thing that you want legally to happen is for her and her lawyers to dig in your transactions that you're using as proof to what the payments were and were not. 
All right, Armand, what are your thoughts? Yeah, it's, this is just unfortunate because it's like, you want to have fun, you want to be young, vibrant and free, right? And you want to have the girls come over and kick it. But unfortunately, when you're this type of, you know, influencer, celebrity, and you have this amount of money, you really have to take multiple steps of precautionary measures to ensure that the people that you're inviting into your home and spending the night with are not clout chasers. To me, I don't think that this does anything for the girl. It's not going to tarnish Kai Sinat's brand it's not gonna end him end his career if anything you know we'll be over this in a week she's gonna get nothing from this she's not gonna get the money but it's just more for him to be more cautious about the women that he brings over you can't just meet a thought online talk to her for a week invite her to your house sleep in the bed because she's taking pictures you're constant out for god's sake so you gotta move a little bit smarter and i believe he will he's 22 so he's just getting he's just getting started honestly uh, you know, I didn't know that he was that young. And the word that I was thinking of was subpoena. If they subpoena his his records, his his bank records, it could just unleash something that he does not want all of mm. us to know. Given that age, can you imagine What's some in of there? the things? <laughs> well, you know what? Well, oh, here goes my Ooh. thing. <laughs> Hold on now. Uh, you can be young, vibrant, and free, but that does not make you smart. And this is dumb. First of all, why are you soliciting sex on in print? Why are you having letting people have evidence of this? And uh, I think they have both thoughts. I think anyone that pays for sex and anyone that accepts money for sex, you both thoughts and hoes. So there you have it. I think you both got to move better. We have some comments. Al, you want to get to those comments? Sure. So Dex in the city said 5,000 is crazy when it's plenty of free cat everywhere. <laughs> All right, Dex, you're right. Sonny Levine said, what a trap. I would never broadcast my kitty engagement on the web. Joseph Savage said, these groupies just ain't like they used to be. You right about that, Joseph. Mm -hmm. And uh, Clowder Clouder Eris said, this ninja better start making folks sign contracts. He does. He's making them sign NDAs, but she, she didn't sign hers before he had to call her back over to get it re-signed. Jermaine Tart said, these dudes, nasty man. Come on, son. And Carmen said, this exposing culture is creepy. Carmen, you hit it on the head right there. This exposing culture is creepy. And it's scary. It's yes. scary. Who's paying 5000 for coochie? Like, every, it sucks it's so easy to get from anybody nowadays. I just don't get it. All right, let's move on. Rapper Lotto shocked social media after posting a throwback photo. Lotto posted a photo of her mother holding her as a newborn with the caption, my mama, 15-year-old, fast ass with me. Do you think it was disrespectful for Lotto to call her mother fast? Al, what do you think? Oh, no. You know, I let me tell you something. I really like this. I like this whole story. I like this picture. I like the transparency. Because, look, whatever the lady was or was not, her and that man are still together. They've been together forever. And, look, her and that man have produced one of the largest female rappers in the game today. Super proud. And let's talk about it. They produced another daughter who's dating one of the largest entertainers in the music business, Drake, allegedly. So whether she was fast or not, something worked out for this family, and I love hearing about it. All right, Armand, what do you think? I agree. I mean, it worked out for him. And then, two, you got to get ahead of the curve anyway. Like, you know, you'd have, she'd have said that in the comments would have trashed her mother. So at this point, I'll say it before they said, you know, it's no secret. And when you're when you're healing and you've healed from whatever the traumas you have, you're not bitter. You don't feel any kind of way about things like that. So I think that in this situation, it's something that they probably laugh about. And now that she's a multimillionaire and super successful, it's water under the bridge. And I'm sure they don't care about her. being. Can you imagine... Arbar, can you imagine what they talk about at, at Thanksgiving or at Christmas when like she's girl. bringing all the gifts in the door and stuff? <laughs> yeah, like, girl. Did we know that we were making this when we were 16 or 15? Like, I can imagine that it ends up being great kitchen fodder for, for all, all of them, her well, sister, it, for her. Was, and two, especially because your daughter turned out to be better than you on like right. 10 times better, successful, like worldwide. So you didn't make a mistake. So honestly, right. I'd be proud. Right, right. I don't know if it's not a mistake, but it had a happy ending. And I think because they're so close in age, they probably are more like friends and have that typical, stereotypical mother-daughter relationship. I think it shows that they are they have that kind of relationship. Like some people might say, oh my God, I can't believe you said that about your mother. But depending on the family dynamic and the kind of relationship she has, mm -hmm. obviously it's okay with her mother. I don't think she'd be putting her mom out there like that. I never heard her say anything bad about her mom. So 
Good for her. Uh, Jay Calwood, 25, says she didn't look 15 in the picture, though. And Candace said, this is how some people talk about their parents. I would never. Britannica Yanni said, what's wrong with calling a 15-year-old having a child fast? That's true, too. <laughs> and Shell NC said, this is not a flex. Hey, they like it. I love it. Coming up next, exciting news about Angel Reese. And later, we're talking about bouncing back from life's setbacks. Keep it here with mm. me. One, take one. I thought we'd be on the same page about this, and we're not. How do I know the way I'm going to respond to it? I want you to get the vaccine, because I want you to be safe. What if you end up in the hospital? That's what I'm scared of. If you was to die, man, that would literally kill me, man. They hug you? Yes. <laughs> they made you feel that way, bro? I probably do. I love you. I love you, too. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers. The sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. Freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear, to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. Welcome back to TGIF. Our child of the Chicago Sky has selected Angel Reese in the 2024 WNBA draft. The news comes after Angel announced that she would be leaving college basketball to pursue a career with the WNBA. Are you excited for Angel Reese? Armand, what are your thoughts? Absolutely. With all that she's endured to make it to the WNBA, I think this is a great look for her. I feel like her parents should be proud and I would be proud to, you know, have this moment. So I'm excited to see what she does. I'm excited to see, too, if the people are still discussing her like they were doing when she was in college. I'm just excited to see what this become, what she becomes. So absolutely. It just sucks that going into the WNBA should be like a major upgrade and celebration, but she's making more money in college, which is that they released those. Uh, I'm sure you guys saw the salary, the top player for like a three, four year deal is like $300,000. Ridiculous. Uh, Al, what do you think about this story? And her I'm just so proud of her. I'm so proud of her. I, I just, and she's so beautiful and mm -hmm. sexy and girl. And, well, I don't want to be, well, you know what I mean? Girly and, 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 and tall. <laughs> Congratulations, Angel Reese. I know your parents are extremely proud. And you're right, Claudia. It's so interesting to see the disparity between the NBA and the WNBA in those contracts. She's going to make over the course of four years $324,000, which is about $75,000 a year. Now, mm -hmm. while she was in college, her NIL deals, which is name and likeness, was making her close to $2 million. So, and she had one more year of eligibility to still make that type of money. So I, I, I'm so happy for her, but if it was me, I think I would have stayed one more year and guapped up that money, that two million that they were giving yes. out in college her last year. So and why do you guys think she did that? Um, I think she probably, she said in the, in the interview that she has always wanted to play in the WNBA. Mm -hmm. She said she got everything that she wanted out of college that she went there for, and clearly she did. Um, she played with some of the best. She won a national championship. She made top dollar while she was there. She just felt that she'd outgrown it. You know, I'm sure maybe if the deals don't come through like 
they did for her when she was in college because she had Beats by Dre. She had Goldman Sachs, the largest investment firm in the world. She had Reese's. She had Top. She had some of the biggest endorsements while she was in college. I hope it does transfer for her, Armand, including maybe a Nike deal down the road. We hope it does turn into that, and that will supplement the spread, that $1.5 million spread between her NIL deals and her NBA, her WNBA. And, and she probably left because how she was treated this past year. Like They, mm. they were trying to make her such the villain in the last playoff like against yeah. it, it was it was unbelievable the, the amount of um negativity she was getting geared aimed at her she probably was like you know what i'm out of here i'm sick of this nonsense and the way they treat caitlin clark versus how they play treat a player mm. like angel reese and you cannot you cannot sit here and say that it has nothing to do with race they made it the great white hype and when when the team loses they still got more attention than the winning teams last year and this year like it was unbelievable how it must be frustrating. So I think, in, you know, I think to your point, Al, hopefully she will continue to get those endorsements in her pro uh, career, which she won't have to go overseas like Brittany Griner had to do. But right, yeah, right, still a long right. way to go. We have some comments. T. Con uh, T. Thomas said contracts are ridiculous for the WNBA. Robin Rich said Angel will make her money with sponsorships. And MT69 said, well, we in Chicago are excited to have her city. Simone said her NIL deals will translate to endorsements. We hope so. Get that money, girl. All right, Nelly's recent performance has been circulating on the internet. Social media is trolling him for performing for a nearly mm. empty audience. <laughs> Rapper The Game chimed in and wrote, nothing to see here. He got paid probably 60 to 100K to perform, even if it was only one person there. Sometimes promoters drop the ball on promoting shows, so it's not on bra. What's your take on this, Armand? I agree. I agree that, you know, that is not the artist's job to fill those seats necessarily all the time. Like promoters need to do their job and promote. However, the ego in me would have been so bruised. I probably would have been able to go out there. I would have been embarrassed <laughs> for sure. You know what I mean? But I feel like Nelly could have gotten more people. They just didn't know that he was performing. Had to be. Because when you go to a Nelly concert, I would go if it was like a right priced. No. Yes. I, I went I went to a Nelly concert recently and it was priced between 150 and 200 dollars and it was packed wall to wall. When I saw this, I looked at it as one of two things. Either the promoter did a horrible job of promoting and it wasn't in his demographic or possibly this was a private party for like a company or or you know some type of private event where the company rented out this the the venue and they brought nelly in to perform i mean we know nelly is a top artist i mean that has him and ashante we love them they have a strong following and it's so funny that you said that armand because i'm like you really would feel embarrassed and not go out there man to get my hundred thousand i know right i would have been skipping back and forth too. on that if it was one person there i would have been doing the moonwalk <laughs> you know, hundred thousand dollars for 45 right. minutes Prolific, prolific Queen NY said it looked like a sound check, and some people in the chat are saying it was a sound check. But again, it is the uh, promoter's uh, job to heavily promote, spend money on radio, do all that kind of stuff. And a lot of times they think, oh, well, Nelly's a big name, or whoever, insert name, is a big enough name. Just uh, uh, you putting it on your social media is enough. Uh, we have some more comments. Candace said it wasn't at a university, and it was only for students. Mm -hmm. And Trevor Mitchell said Brandy performed for an empty stadium once upon a time. It happens. Definitely a promoter and a back end era. And also, what else is happening that night? A lot of times they don't do their research. There may be a competing concert. And I will say, with the last couple of years, people are exhausted and fatigued from spending a lot of money on some of these huge concerts that came through, like Beyonce and you know Drake and some of the others. So hey, it, it's that's definitely on the promoter. A student at Indiana State University made racist comments in response to Beyonce's latest Cowboy Carter album. Take a look. You're not country. I, I know you were raised in the country, or your grandparents were, I guess, your great granny and grandpas. But they was picking, okay? They wasn't planting. Just keep that in mind. They wasn't making money. They was getting sold for money. You ain't country. You know, we do a clean show now, so I can't really say what I really want to say. But you know what the mind is saying, thinking right now, what I want to say. But anyways, the president of Indiana State University issued the following statement. This video impacts the entire campus community. 
but it deeply affects students from marginalized groups. Make no mistake, we hear you, we see you, we support you. We have been and will continue to work for you. What do you have to say about this, Al? What are your thoughts? Um, this really pissed me off. I mean, really, really, this really pissed me off. But then I had to think about it. Indiana State University is not even the top 25 school in the state of Indiana. And if I want to be honest, they need to freaking look into their admittance and investigate their admission process because obviously you don't have to have a half of a brain to get in that university, allegedly. If this young lady is supposed to be so smart going to a university and don't know the history of country music, number one, we all know where that comes from. That's African-Americans, musical traditions, blues, gospels, and folk, to folk tales. We understand that they came over with the slave trade, young lady, and, and, and it's published everywhere. So not only are you blissfully ignorant with this statement, you're also blissfully ignorant by calling her grandma cotton pickers. No, they weren't. They're not that old. They wouldn't be kick, kick, picking cotton at that time in the 30s, young lady. Not only are you bad at history and literature, but you're bad <laughs> at math. So what I think you should do, young lady, is take a couple of years off from school and get your crap together. <laughs> if you ever pull this again, understand that I will galvanize and I will go in support and I will protest at that university to have her addressed in front of all of us if you disrespect our community again at this level, as well as disrespecting our queen and her lineage. Black Sunshine, hey, said, Black Sunshine, Sunshine said she's trying to go viral so she can afford her nose job. <laughs> and uh, Miss 0810 says they always come back with a lame, long apology. You know, I'm not surprised Indiana has one of the highest numbers of registered Klan members. I do remember that when I went to college in Ohio, just uh, uh, over uh, the border. And I was like, wow, you would think it's more in the South. But in the Midwest, there's a lot of these <laughs> A lot of these racist attitudes that take forever to die down. And people have been getting really bold lately and feeling like they want to go on social media. But this honey lives on forever. And good luck with your future with these kind of attitudes. Armand, what do you think about this heifer? At the end of the day, whether her ancestors were picking or not, one thing is for sure, they ain't picking no more. And then kids <laughs> that Beyonce got, they're going to see more money than that girl can ever dream of, right? So it doesn't even matter. Beyonce, keep doing your thing. Stay on these clear people's neck. That is why they are sick about it. And you need to keep breaking these records. And her getting on here on her foggy camera, talking this, ain't going to stop nothing. Beyonce is moving the culture forward. And baby, buckle up and heedy har har because it's more brown people getting into the country bag. So they're going to be sick from this point on forward because black people are taking over country music. So get used to it, baby. We're here and we ain't going nowhere. So I don't feel any kind of way. Y'all gonna be upset arguing with your cameras all day for clicks and views. We're gonna be listening to country music with our with our cowboy boots <laughs> and our and our cowboy hats while you girls are upset. So, oh well. And the jealousy is just aging you, ma'am. You you you're mm. in, you're in school. We all look way younger than you, honey. Mm -hmm. You now mm -hmm. Armand's been making jabs about bitter all night. This maybe he was uh, <laughs> anticipating this story because yeah. this right here is a bitter broad mad that your precious country has been overtaken by a black woman who is mm. way richer than all your family members combined, even though you try to hold her down. Oh, well, sad for you. Get your lips done and uh, work out. I don't know. You look horrible. Coming up next, can you bounce back from life setbacks? And later, it seems like people will never stop acting up on airplanes. Let's talk about it when we come back. Uh -huh. <laughs> Freedom, it's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear, to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. Please welcome Al Reynolds and our new official mm -hmm. co-host, Armand Wiggins, who has brought lots of fire to the show. T-G-I-F. To be here, being unapologetically me on a platform like this, I'm happy to be here, and I can't wait to make magic with you guys. Every weekday. I knew you were the right person because you make me want to be better as a oh. host myself. So thank you for that. 
on Fox Soul. You gonna get graphics from time to time. <laughs> That's part of being part of the TGI family. <laughs> This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. My mom wanted my life to be better than what she had as a kid. When I became a mom myself, I feel like my whole world changed. You don't have to be a climate scientist to want to protect the earth. You always want the next generation to have something better than what you had. Welcome back to TGIF. Listen, we spill the tea, but we also spill some financial tea, things that help you out in your life and make life a little bit easier. And tonight is no different. Now, life doesn't happen bi-weekly. So why should you pay that? The money you earn can be in your hands today with Earnin. Earnin is an app that gives you access to your pay as you work up to $100 per day or up to $750 per pay period. Just download the Earnin app and verify your paycheck then access up to $100 a day as you work and leave an optional tip. Any money you, you access plus tips are automatically repaid from your next paycheck. Now, listen, if an unexpected expense comes up, listen, I'm a pet owner. A couple of weeks ago, Shelly was doing really bad. and I thought I had to rush her to the hospital, but I did not, thank God. But back in the day, I had an incident like this, and I would have loved to have an earning app to help me out, you know, especially if I didn't have the money on the spot. Make earning a part of your financial routine and join in earnings over three and a half million customers who say things like, when I think about earning, I think about financial stability and security. It gives me a lot of peace of mind. Down in the earning app today, spelled E-A-R-N-I-N in the Google Play or Apple App Store. Then we download the earning app, type in T, that's T-E-A, under podcast. When you sign up, it'll little, literally really help the show. That's T-E-A under podcast. Al Reynolds. Yes. Tell me about your opinion of earning. What do you think? Hey, I wish I had it when I was coming through and I can use it now. You know, the best thing about earning is the it's the financial responsibility. You actually are being very responsible because if you need the money before you have it, you have access to it. So if you mm. have to buy a birthday gift, if you have a mechanical issue with your car, if like how I used to go to my mother and say, hey, I forgot to tell you, I got book dues due today. She used to date, post date checks back when I was coming through. People in those situations could use earn in and access the money before they get paid. And guess what? When they get paid, it's automatically paid back. So you don't have to worry about the, the triple interest. You don't have to worry about going deeper into debt because it's automatically taken out. I love it. I think it's responsible and I think it's an interesting app that anybody that's in these situations should definitely explore. And then you don't have to ask us to borrow money. Subject to your <laughs> available earnings, location, daily max, and pay period max. See earnin.com slash TOS for details. Earnin is a financial technology company, not a bank. Bank products are issued by Evolve Bank and Trust member FDIC. Promotional considerations furnished by Earnin. Now let's get back to some more topics. Let's take a look at this tweet. It says, believe it or not, People do bounce back from failed relationships, from financial setbacks, from toxic bonds, from unemployment, from anything. All right, fellas, let's get a little personal tonight. I love mm. What is something that you have bounced back from? Armand, let's go to you first. Um, I think something I've bounced back from is just like, you know, I've been transparent here about like having that criminal past and going to jail, having like terrible credit, losing jobs, you know, and, you know, I've took myself you know, from being down at the bottom, being homeless, sleeping on couches, rubbing nickels together just to get 69 cent tacos at Del Taco all the way to becoming, you know, a successful YouTuber, you know, having two apartments here in L.A., driving the car I love to drive, being on this show. You know, so I definitely believe that you can use your failures and your shortcomings to get back 
to a better place because I'm literally proof of it. You know, if you just have the right idea, you stay focused and you you keep your energy vibrating at the right level, you can you can definitely bounce back because I'm I'm living proof of bouncing back. I was at rock bottom and now I'm in a very much better place in my life. So yeah. And I'm sure it feels damn good to say be able to say that now. Mm -hmm. You know, Al, what about you? <laughs> I have to say, if you look up the word bounce back in the dictionary, you will definitely see a picture of me. <laughs> Even after having 110 jobs, listen, I went uh, from making the six figures, mid mid middle to high six figures, to making five figures, you know, losing it all. I mean, I've been, you know, on social services. I've been, I've had EBT. And I've spent the last 15 years building all that back, and that is bouncing back. So for me, bouncing back is just normal way of life right now. But I do know this, with a little bit of faith, a little bit of prayer, a whole lot of hard work, and a, a little sprinkle of luck, I'm coming back. You know, I'm building it all back right now. So I'm in the process of a bounce back for me. And I have to say thank you, Claudia, for giving me the opportunity to do this show because this is a part of my bounce back journey. And it's really helping me. So can you yeah. believe that was like over three years ago? Yeah. Can yeah. you believe that? Right. And it's still and going strong. <laughs> from a car, from a car a ride. A car ride with Gary with the team. A wedding. Taking a Rolls Royce to a McDonald's <laughs> drive through. And I was like, this is wild. Um, bounce back. Uh, I think I'm right next to you in that dictionary, Al. I've had a lot of, um, had to come back from the dead a few times, almost literally, you know, I've even talked about, uh, my brush with suicide and just being so depressed, being not like, oh, I feel down, but the kind of depression where you actually feel physical pain, where your heart is broken. And I just felt very helpless. I felt like nobody cared. And, um, I learned a lot from that. You know, I had to allow myself and stop being so independent and let someone help me. You know, a lot of times black people, I think, especially we think I got to be tough. I got to, you know, we don't want to owe anybody anything. And there's nothing wrong with letting somebody hug you and like kind of like say it's going to be all right. And let me help you, you know, and, and and that's not I don't think you should feel like you're losing any pride with that. I think that, you know, sometimes you pray to God and you're wondering why it's not happening. It's because you're turning away the angels that he sent to help you. I remember being on my knees praying at the bed, end of my bed. I was about to go through foreclosure in LA. I had a million dollars in real estate. I lost it all in one month. And like, I'm like, why is this happening to me? And um, it was very humbl humbling and it made me really appreciate what I had. And also not value myself based on just work. You cannot go around here crapping on people because I got this, I got that. Because that can all be taken away from you. So at the mm -hmm. end of the day, what kind of person are you? Are you someone that has good character? Are you someone that when you are down and out, somebody wants to come over there and hug you and help you? So I think it's really, really important the way you behave and treat people when you're up. And um, I, I want to write more about this because I feel like people just see the end result. They see us shining. They see the bright lights. They see the, that we're making money. But they don't see that the, the line of success wasn't like that. It was like this, right? <laughs> Probably for all of us. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and I uh, think... Oh, go ahead. And success looks like it looks differently to everybody, but you know, there's a lot of sad stories behind a lot of successful people that may um, were very close to it not, you know, happening from God Armand. I was just gonna say, and, and too, for like people out there that that may feel like they're going through that, you know, that setback right now and trying to get back. I think one of the things that I've also learned is, you know, a lot of times we fall into these situations or we're staying stuck in those situations because that's what we're focusing our attention to. So a lot of times we should focus on where we, where we know where we're going and not worried about how we're going to get there. Just know in our mind that we deserve better and we are going farther. If you focus on the, the negative, you will continue to attract that kind of vibration into your life. So just I just want to put that out there. I've learned to focus my thoughts on moving forward and not the negative because I start drawing more negative to me. Mm. So. It's like that the concept in the secret, right? Like yeah. you, the, the world is falling apart. If you just go like just repeat a mantra every day, I will have a six figure deal. I will make twenty thousand dollars this month. I will do this mm -hmm. instead of saying, "Oh, I don't have it. I wish I never get it." Yeah, we'll continue to never get it. We have a few comments I want to read. Um, JC Callwood said, "JC Allwood said, uh, I needed to hear this because I'm in my low moment right now." Oh, I'm glad we're speaking to you. I really am. And Jasmine J said, "I literally needed to see this first thing when I turned on my TV just now. Mm -hmm. I lost my job two weeks ago, and I'm having a hard time accepting what has happened." Thank you, guys. Jasmine, you will get another job. Keep saying it. Veronica Smith said, damn, been there, Claudia. Thank you for being transparent. My pleasure. Ivan Lawson said, I understand that pain, Claudia. I'm fighting it now. 
Do not let depression overcome you. And it's okay to tell people I need help. Carrie yes. just needed to hear this message so bad tonight. Thank you, Al, Claudia, and Armand. I think a lot of people are going through stuff like this, but social media has us thinking we have to pretend that we all are popping. Everybody on social media is rich, got bad bees in the, on deck and got holes in different area codes and the best cars. Everyone's not there. Absolutely. And, and I think that's why, to... oh, sorry. Sorry. I was just saying like, I made it my job too on, you know, not to plug my YouTube channel, but like I made sure that with the gossip and things, I put this kind of content on my platform because I learned that this is important because a lot of people consume like tea and gossip, but they're going through a lot and they don't know how to get out of it. And it's really starts in your mind. So it's very important that you train your mind to focus on what's important and what's positive. Moving forward, we're going to continue to give you the tea, but we have to have more of these kinds of conversations. They're more yeah. meaningful. I mean, we can mm -hmm. talk about celebs all day. That's cute. But I want to help the average person as well and feel like they know that they're not alone. And we're human just like y'all. All right, y'all. Very good. Thanks, guys, for being transparent about that. Keep it locked because coming up next, will people never stop acting up on airplanes? <laughs> and later, Honey Boo Boo calls out her scandalous, greedy mother. That's next. We'll be right back. My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood, but one day she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual, and uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn, and she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you, and we'll figure it out. Please welcome Al Reynolds and our new official co host, Armand Wiggins, who has brought lots of fire to the show. TGIF. To be here, being unapologetically me on a platform like this, I'm happy to be here and I can't wait to make magic with you guys. Every weekday. I knew you were the right person because you make me want to be better as oh. a myself. So thank you for that. On Fox Soul. You're going to get graphics from time to time. <laughs> That's part of being part of the TGI family. <laughs> This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Cause when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. There was a time in my life where I was extremely homesick. I decided that I needed a pet. When I first saw a turtle, my heart was full. He jumped up and kissed me and like jumped right into my arms. I immediately went up to the volunteers at the shelter and said, I want him, like, he's got to come home with me. Not anything but lonely. Every day with turtle is a perfect day. Wow, welcome back to the show. I spent the commercial break looking through the comments on YouTube and just seeing what the soulmates had to say about that because that's different than what we usually do, right? So let me just go ahead and read a few of the comments. Uh, let's see. Uh, Sylvia Andrews says, emotional setback, but God is good. Mm -hmm. And Opal Gale says, thank you all for this segment, the vulnerability and transparency kisses. And Jay Craft said, thank you for all the words and sharing your experiences. I needed this message. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. There's a whole bunch. Uh, Larry, Dr. Larry Speak says, also make sure you're around eagles and not pigeons. <laughs> and uh, Glow said, these mo these sincere moments are what matters most. Tina Wine mm. Twine said, perfectly said, panel, I needed to hear this tonight. And Beach Lover said, needed to hear that. Been so depressed since my father passed a few weeks ago. Thank you. Beach Lover, our, our condolences to you and your family. And Forge by Five says, literally just finished praying before y'all got on this topic. It's confirmation. <laughs> it is. We are not alone in this, you guys. We are all going through, we're all humans. We're all going through a lot of similar things. We just mask it in different ways. Some with alcohol, some with being mean, some with talking trash, some with going in a shell, or some say nothing. So I think a lot of us, we have more in common than we, than we may want to admit. 
I hope y'all all stay strong and see yourselves out of this, this storm. All right, y'all, we see so many stories about passengers acting up on flights, so we're going to take a deeper look into uh, airline passenger behavior in Fight or Flight. Soulmates, make sure you drop a comment in the chat and let us know what you would do in these situations because people are wilding out. All right, airplane passengers were turning up to sexy red on a two-hour flight from Nashville to Houston. Watch this clip. Okay, if you were on this plane, would you fight and try to put an end to the madness? Or would you flight and join in on a sexy red party? Armand, what do you think? I ain't gonna hold you. You know, I, I'm one of those sticklers that like to get on the plane and just do my thing and get out my way and go to sleep and keep it quiet. But there's something about a group of black people having a good time and being on all on one accord and not even knowing each other that I love. And so that's that young vibrance and freeness I love there. And I probably would, would have been right there for that two hours, turning up with them people, having a good time. And, you know, I like these kind of moments where we can all come together and have a good time. And it seemed like no one really had issues with it. So I probably would have joined in on the madness. I ain't going to hold you. All right, Al, how about you? I think it, it would depend on what time this was going down and how many cocktails I had in the, <laughs> in the airport before I got on that plane. I'm not that type of guy. I, I can see if I saw everybody was having fun, I probably would join in. But I'm kind of like Amon. I usually when I get on a plane, I'm, I'm usually focused. I'm going to my seat. I'm trying to relax. I'm not trying to party for two hours from Nashville to Houston or Houston to Nashville. So... Uh, Maybe I would have asked for a cocktail and joined in. You would have. You <laughs> definitely would have. I'm going to tell you this. I am definitely here for this. I think this is fun. Now, of course, it's because I like hip hop. I love rap. And listen, as much as we can talk crap about Sexy Red's lyrics, and yes, they are sometimes atrocious. They are fun. and They're fun songs. And I'm with you, Armand. A bunch of black people having fun. Now, it's because music. it's music that I like. Had it been some rock and roll, I'd be like, shut up, that's too loud. <laughs> I'd be in my inner camera like, can we, can I speak to management? Can I speak to the captain? But I think this was fun. They were having a good time. They weren't being, you know, mean or violent or anything. They were just having a good time. They were young. Uh, Sean Riot said it was kind of lit though. Sexy would have got me turned up. And Auntie Mimi Ma said all of those people, nope, I'll be hot. Two hours, Nizzy said, I just love the vibe of a culture. I don't like Sexy Red but I can have a good time. All right. All right. A woman went off. Go ahead. Go ahead. Amari. I was going to say, if it was a six hour flight, no, but two hours, there's not much you can get done. Let's party for six hours. I mean, two hours, not six, you know? Uh, now the whole flight, that'd be a bit much. I'll give you a couple songs here. <laughs> we all, we're going to be quiet after that. Right. All right. A woman went off after the person behind her kept kicking her seat. Take a look. The whole trip, she played my seat. Oh, in this situation, would you fight if someone was kicking your seat or would you flight and ignore them to keep the peace out? What you doing? Fight, fight, fight. I've had this happen to me and that's why I had to get my coin up and move to first class as many times as I can. I I have had this happen and it's just so ridiculous because some people because they're new to flying they don't really know the rules and and that even makes it worse but I'm I'm definitely ringing my call bell I'm definitely calling it out I'm definitely asked to be moved I'm that dude but you know once again that's what the that's the reason why I work so hard with all my jobs I don't like sitting in places where I'm I'm not familiar with so this would never happen in first class. This would never happen in business class because it just doesn't. So no, I'm fighting. <laughs> honey, honey said people will bring the beast out on those tight planes. Yeah. Armand, what you think about this? What would you do? Listen, I'm with my porcelain princess on this one. I'm laying my seat back and you bet not touch me. You right. bet not kick me. Like, cause that's the first thing I'm doing. I'm about to get comfortable. So you better move around because we definitely gonna have a problem if I'm trying to sleep and you keep kicking my seat. Cause I'm going to tell you like, stop touching my seat. And yeah. then, if, you know, at that point, if you don't stop, then I'm going to have to call the flight attendant. And it's just going to be a thing because 
this is, I like my seat laid back, period. And you know what? And the person in front of me, they're going to lay their seat back. And, you know, I just have to deal with it. So it is what it is. We're on the plane. Get comfortable the best way you know how and move around. Yeah, um, lady, the seats are made to be pushed push back, lean back, except they're on spirit because this is how they, they recline on spirit. That's it. That's all you get on a spirit flight. But on other flights, they go back. So what you do is when their flight seat is back, you put yours back and problem is solved. Like all this kicking in my seat, I've had to check some before and turn around and be like, can you stop kicking, kicking my seat? Thank you. Uh, mm. We're not doing the kicking of the seats. And I don't always fly first class. Actually, I, pl I fly more coach in first class. Uh, but, you know, I, when I'm back there and they, they're doing all this, you have to say something or just ask the yeah. flight attendant. They have no problem going back. It seems like they almost are there for it. Like, they like going back and telling them something. So let them handle it. But no, you ain't about to be kicking my seat the whole flight, especially a kid, too. Uh, mm. Control your little beast. Control your little baby kid. Don't be kicking my seat. Melissa Douglas said, uh, there's a way to speak to someone to get results. That wasn't it. Tony Terry said, just put your seat up. This happened to me. And yes, I kicked the hell out of the seat because your seat is in my lap. Okay, 726 Monica said, okay, and I'll let them know. I turn around and give them a look first. Okay, all right. Well, anyways, yeah. Watch what happens after an airplane, a plane fell victim to extreme turbulence. All right, if this happened to your flight and you had extreme turbulence, so sometimes it drops really fast and it's really scary. Would you fight, meaning get upset? or over the turbulence, or would you flight and give the pilot a break? Amon? I'm giving him a break if he gets me out of there alive. True, he can't really control <laughs> those elements. I'm just, at that moment, I'm not thinking about fighting or flight. I'm thinking, is this my final moments? Let me repent for all of my sins, <laughs> okay? Because this might be the end. And I'm secretly trying to use the the the, uh, the Wi-Fi to call my mama, let her know what's going on via FaceTime. I'm scared at this point. So I'm just praying that the flight attendant know what he's doing and we're going to land safely. I don't care about that food. I don't care about your baby. I don't care about nobody around me. Just please get me home safely and land the plane as quickly as you can. Brittany said, I'm praying to Jesus. Al, what you doing? I'm praying. I'm praying. There's <laughs> nothing you can do. It's it's not his fault unless he's like up there doing something illegal. I mean, it's turbulence. And so I'm I'm praying. That's what I'm doing. And then I'm like, I'm on. I'm checking my Wi-Fi to see if it's still working. And I'm sending <laughs> emails. <laughs> I'm sending emails that if if I don't make it back, this is where you can find my will and my insurance policy. <laughs> Everything else, y'all figure it out. <laughs> okay. Law of Attraction said, I'm just glad we didn't crash, so I'm minding my business with the pilot. Yeah, um, fighting and making a big deal out of this is not going to help right. the pilot focus on what he needs to do. Like, let's maintain as much calm as we can so we can just get, I'm I'm concerned about landing safely. I'm glad everybody answered that correctly because if you fighting, I'll, I'm never being on the plane with any of y'all. We doing that. <laughs> Who's doing that? Uh, we have another comment. Uh, let's see. Dr. Larry said, I hate flying, so I would be terrified. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, Opal Gale said, Al will sue the pilot, the flight attendants, the <laughs> airport, and the Lord. <laughs> All right. Coming up, Honey Boo Boo, uh, Honey Boo Boo calls out her scandalous mother. Find out what she did. We'll be right back. Keep it locked. Hmm. My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood, but one day she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual, and uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn, and she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you, and we'll figure it out. Please welcome Al Reynolds and our new official co host, Armand Wiggins, who has brought lots of fire to the show. TGIF. To be here, being unapologetically me on a platform like this, I'm happy to be here and I can't wait to make magic with you guys. Every weekday. I knew you were the right person because you make me want to be better as oh. a myself. So thank you for that. On Fox Soul. You're going to get graphics from time to time. <laughs> That's part of being part of the TGI family. <laughs> This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps, and programming the blockchain. 
They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. There was a time in my life where I was extremely homesick. I decided that I needed a pet. When I first saw a turtle, my heart was full. He jumped up and kissed me and like jumped right into my arms. I immediately went up to the volunteers at the shelter and said, I want him, like, he's gotta come home with me. Not anything but lonely. Every day with turtle is a perfect day. Welcome back to the show. All right, Alana Thompson, AKA Honey Boo Boo, went off on her mother for their financial struggles. Alana's mother, known as Mama June, was allegedly stealing all of Alana's hard earned money, leaving her with only $33,000 to her name despite years of working and being very popular. The money was allegedly used to fund Mama June's drug addiction. Allegedly. Alana's sister said, You're not a supportive mother. You lost $500,000 to a bag of bleeping crack. Can you believe Alana's own mother would do her this dirty? Armand, what do you think? Absolutely. You know, they come from the trailer. It's like they were like trailer trash, weren't they? So I just kind of feel like, but $500,000 worth of crack, like, what does that look like? How do you smoke that much dope like you know and still be alive i don't know i just feel like this is a very unfortunate situation for you know honey boo boo because she's been around for a long time and you think you know hey your parent is supposed to be the one to protect you put that money up for you to have a brighter future not go smoke dope and get bbl surgeries and get facelifts and all that stuff and then when it comes time for you to you know grow up and move on and collect that money now you can't because it's all gone. So it's it's unfortunate, but I can say I'm not surprised. You know, they're from their trailer trash. Mm. Alana is now struggling to come up with money to go to college, which is sad because she wants to go and she doesn't have the money for it when she should. Al, what do you think? I, I need to know over what time period was the $500,000 stolen? Because the way she's making it seem, it's recent. And I, that, that's just not adding up for me. Is it over the course of the 10 years or the 20 years that they've been in entertainment that she looked up and she thought the money was being saved? And when she found out there was only $33,000 in the account, I need to know more information here. I just think it's unfortunate when your mother or family member steals from you. So I can only imagine what she's going through, but I need a little bit more details. I need more details. I'm not buying that she just stole $500,000 in the last couple of years and spent it all on crack. I just, I just can't see her being alive and having consumed half a million dollars worth of crack. So for me, I need more details. It's unfortunate. I wish the best for Honey Boo Boo. And listen, I guess you just have to go to college on financial aid, like a lot of us have had to use to get through college. Well, the whole 500,000, I, I seen a video of them and they were kind of arguing, right? Or audio and I heard audio. Uh -huh. It wasn't all crack because, you know, crack is cheap. What's that, five, ten dollars a vial, $20? I don't know. But I don't know how many vials of crack she's doing. She still stayed big, which is weird. But anyways. Um, and had teeth. Right. Yeah. Well, the sides is missing now. I don't trust people with missing side teeth, but we'll get into that a whole nother time. Your priorities are in the wrong place. And her priorities were in the wrong place. She, she was kind of trying to defend herself. She was totally gaslighting, honey, boo-boo. Well, you know, I had to get a house. I had to get this and that. So your minor child had to foot the bill for the entire family, all of it. I get when you're like, okay, my child is successful. And some of that money is going to have to help the household because we don't have it all. But don't just only and solely rely on that child. Like, you should still try to make some kind of effort yourself. And then on top of that, we all done seen the plastic surgery she got and all that upgrading of herself she did to leave $33,000 in an account for your child when she made the lion's share. She really is the one that made it happen for y'all. It's just shameful. Uh, Latte and Luxury said, my mom put money in a trust and then spent it all. If you're not financially educated, the money is going to go. And uh, Fish Eye Jedi said, she better get back on reality TV. Honey Boo Boo goes to college. And Karen D said, I thought any money's earned was going into a trust. Jay Scott said, a lot of parents do this. I stole mine back. Oh, wow. 
Maybe is that why she just found out about it? Maybe she, the trust was like now is when she gets her money and she's like, oh, my God, there's no money in that trust. I don't know. Well, we'll yeah. find out about that. But to, to, to Al really quick, I've seen the clips, too. And the the mom, Mama June, was like, you know, it is what it is. I spent the money on my drug on my drug habit. Mm -hmm. So so she pretty much said, like, I blew it all on drugs. What do you guys want me to do? And it was unfortunate because it was like, imagine your mom <laughs> saying, you know, listen, I spent the money on the crap. What do you want me to do? It's like you're defeated. Like, because you look at your parents. I don't know about you guys, but I look at my parents as like superheroes at some point. And so for your superhero to be like, I ain't got it. It's gone. You feel like I'm you. That's the ultimate defeat. Because it's, it's like there's nothing to come back from. The dismissive so attitude of, of it is what it is. is right. what I, I, really. But see, up. the reason why I say I need more information is because if we look at Honey Boo Boo's earning, the family members each got $50,000 each episode, right? Mm -hmm. Over the course of the episode, Honey Boo Boo, outside of the family getting $50,000 an episode, Honey Boo Boo got $2.75 million, almost $3 mm. million. So I'm just like, how do you make all that money and you only have $35,000 in your account? That can't be all mama missteps now. Wait, was that for the season or for an episode? That was for the season, right? No, by the end of the show, she had made $2.75 million, according to, you know, records of, of people mm -hmm. that, that reported her salary. Okay. But per episode, the family was getting $50,000, if I'm not mistaken. That's so they help me out. I think they were getting $50,000 for every episode. So it's like, yeah, that's a whole lot of money. So that's a lot. For not the only was mama blowing through that, now you're saying mama blew that through that and then she blew through your millions too. I need some more clarity on this because it's just not adding up. All right, well in Florida news, a man was shocked when a mystery object crashed through his home, leaving a hole in his roof and ceiling. NASA confirmed the object as space hardware that was part of the International Space Station. NASA said the, that astronauts released some aging batteries of the ISS and expected the hardware to burn up on the Earth's atmosphere upon release. A piece of the hardware survived damaging this man's home. What would be going through your mind in this situation? I'm going to say something real quick. Imagine, okay, I we assume that's going to burn out. Imagine if that would have hit someone in the head, like you're uh. dead. You know what I mean? Like this, this I think 7,500 yeah. satellites orbiting Earth right now. That's what I heard recently expect more of this al what do you think uh whatever that soulmate said al is suing i'm suing nasa i'm suing the maker of the plane i'm suing i'm suing the county for putting my house in that lot <laughs> i'm gonna sue i'm suing i am suing i'm suing i don't know because see the other thing about this is this is in outer space so it could be radioactive right so what mm -hmm. what exposure are you putting my family through with this type of liability i i i don't know I think I would be suing. All right, I'm on. I would have lost my mind. I would have freaked out because I would have thought we were for sure going to war. You know what I mean? I would have been so nervous. I probably would have been wrecked. And you got to think about the trauma now because now you can't, you just think every time you're walking around your house, are you thinking something is going to fall out of the sky from space? You know, you make jokes about that kind of stuff. And then when it becomes a reality, you're like, damn, yeah, things really can drop out of the sky, out of outer space. And not only that, it could kill me because it punctured through the roof and the floor. Like, that's scary. I don't think I could even sleep at night in that house. Candace Hood said, my neck, my back, my neck, my back. Tisa Davis said, Al gonna sue the solar system. <laughs> honey Honey said, yes, I'm glad it, it didn't hit anyone. And uh, yeah, yeah, uh, me too. Hey, real quick, I just want to just shout out TMZ. I was on TMZ Live today, uh, Harvey Levin and Charles. They had me on today. We were discussing that there is a, a new pageant that is uh, all AI generated beauty contestants. So I spoke on that. So go ahead and go to TMZ.com uh, and check that out today. And uh, it probably will air. What did you say? That's weird. I, I'm not here for so they're it. They're not I, real people? No, they're not. They're So it's really about the artist creations, like how beautiful of a creature that they can create is all fake. And it's a cash prize. I said, it's good for a one-time thing. It's kind of like an art show, but I just feel like it's a slippery slope. And we already have these unrealistic expectations from social media. Now we have these perfect beings to kind of feel insecure about. So I'm just like, I personally am not, I'm really not into this whole AI and I just think it's too much fakeness. It's making it harder for even us to differentiate what's real and what's fake. So I, I'm not really that much into it. So please check that out. It's a lot of that happening. Now they're doing AI like talent agencies too. So they don't have to book influencers. Now all the influencers are AI. 
And so you they get the they get the brand deals and stuff now without hiring, you know, people. More money out of more humans' pockets and more money into the corporations and the creatives' pockets. Mm -hmm. I want to thank my co-host Al Reynolds and Armand Williams for joining me tonight. Thanks for watching us on YouTube. Stay tuned for Fox Souls Face Off where they be going at it. We will see you back here tomorrow. Bye, fellas. Bye, son. Bye, y'all. Good night. See you tomorrow.